What's up, guys? We're here at AMC Town Square with Chasing Cinema. Mr. James Shoe. Dot com, and we are here for Idris Elba's Matthew McConaughey's Stephen King's Dark Tower. The Dark Tower. A um, lot of hype going into this. Stephen King's first uh, of two movies coming out this year. It. Yeah, uh, later this year, which I'm really pu uh, pumped up for. But I'm pumped up for this. However, uh, this is a series that I did not read, uh, even though I am a eight Stephen books. King fan. Yeah, I believe it's eight or nine books long. Um, and from what I heard, great things. Uh, but obviously, uh, kind of creeping into this week, we've heard a lot of, of rumbling. Bad stuff. For instance, that I think you, you told me earlier that the first test screening was two and a half hours. Yeah, the first one was two and a half hours, then they showed it to their test audience uh, last year. And now it is an hour and shorter. And they weren't happy with certain things, and then now it's down to 88. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> then uh, also, you were telling me that it is a mixture of book one, two, and four. Something like that. Something, yeah. Something if that's wrong, books. it's something like that. They'll let they us know in the comments if like it's wrong. They try to create like an original story. Because I heard, I originally heard that it's not so much an adaptation, at, at, or like it's not so much like oh book to film as much as like they're like okay we're gonna take this and just do our own thing. No, well they took elements from the, yeah. those three books or something like that. Anyway, a start of a major franchise uh, has a huge following, and um, something that I was really hoping to see uh, that would move me or even possibly make it in my top ten. But if it did or not, we'll have to find out with. Shoe going first, though, as always. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I felt the way you felt about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll, I, I can see, I see it as a 5 out of 10. I didn't think it, was, it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And other than the fact of Idris Elba, which I just love this guy. Yeah. I would love for him to be James he's Bond. The man. I would love for him. To, I think he's smooth. He's the man. Good looking guy, sexy guy. He was a, what was it? It was Bond and then Batman too, right? They were like, oh, he just could do both. I didn't hear the Batman part, I but heard definitely heard Batman. <clears throat> when people said that he could be James Bond, Bond. I, I, I see that. I can see that. So I thought that'd be really cool. I think those hopes and dreams have uh, burned gone, and yeah. diminished like the Dark Tower. So <laughs> I, think, I think those are gone. So, but, so I think the best part of this movie was Idris Elba and um, my favorite part, I guess, of the movie would be the, the bullet. Gun part, those are cool. The gun Everything else, parts. though, honestly, no idea. Like, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't even know what happened. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, could you explain the plot to somebody what this movie's about? Probably not. Granted, <laughs> I did fall asleep for like five minutes, and it sounds like my throat that, is out or something, yeah, huh? Yeah. You probably you were snoring, and um, it was it was so pleasant because while you were snoring during that five minutes, we didn't have to hear any of the dialogue going on in the movie. No, Brian would have woke me up if I was making too much noise, but uh, no, I don't know. It's a really scattered, what appears to be sloppy kind of a movie. It just feels like a mess. And then Dallas was mentioning earlier that the mouth wasn't moving right, and I actually did notice that at the time, and I was like, of, lot why of is this mouth not moving? Lot of this is like not a Chinese dub film, this there, is an American film. Well, a lot of, I mean, even the most common American films use ADR at some points or the other, and this is just a very poorly ADR film. You know, I think that comes to all, like, uh, comes with reshoots and, and late editing and things like that, and, uh, Obviously, like we were talking about earlier, with it just being butchered uh, from the editing room floor, you could t definitely feel like it. The movie never feels like it has kind of a set tone. It feels like we're missing chunks on end uh, of character development, of situations kind of rumbling. I mean, I, I think the first, seat, the first scene in the movie feels like it belonged in the middle of the movie. And then it kind of opens up and... Or, I mean, maybe maybe it wasn't, maybe it was intentionally put there, but it does feel like it's missing something. And then we're kind of thrown into the the um, Jake story, the young boy, and it, it just never really we're never really attached to any characters or, or really kind of brought into their world. We know Jake has these visions and he's bullied and everyone thinks he's weird and and all that, but it never feels yeah. So like everyone it, knows that he was the one doing that, doing what? like right off the beginning of the type beginning of the movie, I was already a little. Uh, put off, confused. Doing what? The earthquakes. Oh, no, no, I don't think he was the one doing the earthquakes. Oh. No, no, but I, I think that everyone just knew, he, like, everyone knew he was weird. He was the weird kid in school, and, like, they kind of just threw that in there to kind of give you an idea of what this kid's like. Oh, am I the only one that thought that? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought. It was, oh. it was actually the tower, the tower being hit in the first sequence. Oh, I, I thought that, that they thought that he was doing it or something. Well, this is the Dark Tower response, you know. This is the problem when you make really sloppy editing <laughs> and, uh, and editing mistakes. People are confused by what's going on because it's not very clear. And I'm not saying you're completely wrong in, in, 
interpreting that because it is like so thrown together in so many different ways. Um, and there's a the, the tone of the movie's off. It doesn't feel like a Stephen King uh, a novel. Granted, you know, I, I can only he's only a writer for so much until the filmmakers take over. But it doesn't have that kind of tone of being something serious and being something really fantastic in in, in terms of genre. It feels more like a, a young adult movie, and it feels kind of clunky and cheesy, and 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 transporting, and, and you know, and all that seems like it would be a great story. But when it's executed, it seems kind of it's hard to take serious. It's hard to really get invested in the world that they're building. Um, and I think my problem is just I had no emotional in, in, uh, investment in anyone. I was just kind of bored. I didn't care what was really going on. Uh, I agree with you on Idris Elba. He is great and he is probably the best part of the movie. Even saying that though, this is not like one of his best. This is not something where he um, stands out super well. I mean, he stands out in a not so great movie. Well, actually a pretty bad movie, but he's not himself phenomenal in this movie. He doesn't do much. He just plays this very cool character that's easy to like. I felt like he didn't even appear for the maybe like 20, 30 minutes. No, he doesn't come in. Yeah, he does, definitely doesn't come in until later. And even then, he's just not a kid. Like, we don't, we're, we're not really invested in anyone. And Matthew McConaughey was very odd in this movie. And, and I thought, yeah, I thought I'm not, not saying his too. character was weird. I thought but it was weird. It didn't feel like Matthew McConaughey was ever playing somebody. It felt like it was Matthew McConaughey kind of playing dress up. You know, he never really kind of transcended into the man in black. And uh, I, that just wasn't super believable to me. And I mean, I don't know. It just. I think it felt sloppy. I think that the action sequences aren't that entertaining. It's hard to really care about these characters. And it's a shame because this movie was, you know, definitely on my list of one to be really good for the summer. And I just didn't take much away from it. I think it's very forgettable. I don't think it's a movie people will be talking about. Um, I'm really curious to see what fans of the book series think. I don't think they're gonna be happy. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You never know. You know, maybe because it strays away so much that it's not tainting something that they love. It's kind of just going on its own world. But, I mean, there's a lot of parts of this movie that feel campy and cheesy and tacky. And then the ones that try to be really super serious and take on a very dark tone. And it's just hard to believe. Um, yeah. I really feel bad for Idris Elba. You know, because he's Marvel and he plays uh, Heimdall. Yeah, Heimdall. Heimdall or something. And it's such a small role yeah. for a guy that could be so big. You know, he could be a great superhero and then he's forever going to be Heimdall or whatever the name is. Yeah. And they, there's not, no ways around that. You know. There's, I would love it if still he plenty became of time Green in you. It's still plenty of time. Yeah, but that character's not big. Yeah. But they could change that. Nah, I don't, I don't think so. Comics can't control them. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I think well, he does play a pretty significant part in Thor too, though. Like he has, I mean, granted, I don't know what you mean. He's not like a, a star, but he has a pretty significant role. Nah, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like he could be like... No, I hear you, but you know. He's he, always secondary. You don't always want to be the, the guy in everything because then you turn he's into... He's not. That's what I'm saying. He, he never is. That's usually the best thing because then you could kind of balance everything. You never want to be that person, you know? No. Then you Then you turn up to be uh, Harry Potter and then you're just Harry Potter for the rest of your life. Well, <laughs> Dark Tower wasn't good, guys. We also got Detroit. Detroit. And Kidnap. And Kidnap. All up there in that white eye. And uh, yeah, so unfortunately, very underwhelming. But like I said, if you caught in the beginning of the video, we still have it. I'm still hoping for that movie to be one of my favorites of the year. It comes out the week of my birthday, and I am excited, and I hope it's going to be amazing. What's the one where it just always on the plane? With Kate Winslet, that movie to me looks fantastic. The the, the mountain movie. Oh yes, my that God. one. The, the I can't remember the name, but we talked that about it at CinemaCon. We fantastic. I, I reviewed the extended trailer that they showed at CinemaCon. You could check out that on our YouTube channel. And uh, the mountains between us. No, no, no. It's something like. Is it the mountain between us? It's the mountain between us. That movie us, looks fantastic. It's about a doctor and a lawyer, and. Uh, Strangers. Yeah, strangers who are crashing on a plane together and, and their experiences together. Does that look looks good. fantastic. You just know, man, he's the man. He could be the charmer, he could be the gunslinger. I'll buy it. Yeah. All right. Handle. What's going on next week? Do you know? Uh, next week, I believe, is Hitman's Bodyguard. Or, no, 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 I'm sorry, that's the following week. Uh, it is um, Annabelle Creation, which right now has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Is that the only movie? That is uh, Glass Castle, I believe, but I don't mm -hmm. know if it's having a wide release next week. So. Cool. Well, we'll be back then. Seven days. Sorry, we're very underwhelmed. We're just disappointed. JasonSim.com is known as. Film Lover's website.